Yes, that time week again. I'm Chef Nicholas Canale. Let's just jump into it. And I'm glad to be back. Two weeks go by really quickly, doesn't it? I do want to say thank you to you guys for watching. We just hit a new record. We, as a community, have hit 14,000 views in one video. That's insane. I barely know 100 people. I got some new discoveries that I'm really excited to tell you guys about. And it has to do with pine cone. And of course, new ingredients we haven't used before in cooking. So yeah. But before we do that, let's jump into the sexy dish. Now I haven't used octopus on my channel before, so until now. Which I'm proud to introduce, drum roll please. Braised pear whiskey octo, as we like to call it in the industry. And with a new ingredient that I haven't experienced before, sauteed sesame greens with fresco chilies. Now first what I did was this, I got very ripe pears and I cut them up, cored them up, threw them into a pan, and then I boiled them with some water. And then once I boiled it, I pureed it, and then I slowly added in some whiskey. Which I spilled my- no! Once I got my braised sauce liquid, I grabbed the octopus head and I chopped it off. Then I put the octopus in the liquid and braised it for at least two hours so until it got nice and soft. That being said, when that was done, I grabbed sesame seed leaves, which I've never used, and it had such incredible smell to it. I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. Thank you, Asian stalls. Got that from Gmart. Then I sliced up the fresco chili, left the seeds in them. Kind of regretted doing that, because I was surprised it was actually spicy, because usually they're not that spicy. Just saying. Sauteed them, and then after the following, I noticed the octopus, because I was plating up the food, I was putting it together. The thing what I noticed about the octopus, it didn't impart much flavor, which I was kind of really disappointed because I was going for the sweet and, you know, that strong whiskey taste because, well, you wanted flavor to get into it. It just tastes like normal octopus when it was cooked. So I had to saute it to give it a color and some, you know, actual texture to it because otherwise it'd just be slimy, you know? So I finished it with yuzu and um, other customers, lemon juice. So I was kind of disappointed in that. And this is just for you guys in the future, if you ever want to do octopus at your own home, use bold flavors. Use very strong bold flavors. And what I mean by bold flavors, use something like rosemary. That's a bold flavor. No matter how much you try it, that flavor is gonna come right through. And same with using coffee and lavender. That's what I mean, etc. This pork belly dish was, which was an interesting one, and we'll go into it in a second. And it had some mushroom medley and squash, one well, squash leaves, which I've never used before. So let's jump into how this was made. So first, what I did was I grabbed the pork belly and I braised it with red miso. Got the red miso and just added water to it. I don't want to do anything crazy with it yet because that wasn't where the crazy part was yet. So I braised that first for at least three hours. And while that was braising for three hours, I got caramelized onions until it was caramelized. And I got aloe, which is the first time I've ever used this. Used my knife to cut the skin off. It was nice and jelly and stuff like that. Very interesting, you know, just an interesting thing in general. Now, some people throw into water, or I'm even told that it's used for oil, which I didn't know that. I just like to experience it as is. So once I cut into small pieces, threw it into my caramelized onion, because I know anything green is gonna be bitter, so to balance it out was caramelized onions. Once that was cooked, I threw it into the blender, and I pureed that, and to add a little more color, because it was kind of a boring color, to be honest with you, I added some spinach to it, and then after that was done, which by the way, my friend Jose goes, what? You did what with the, the aloe? Let me try that, man. What? This is crazy. Oh my God. You should add this to a steak or something. And that's where I did this. I grabbed the pork belly, grilled it, and I basted it with the aloe sauce, and I kept basting it until it got that flavor. Man, yeah, it was kind of cool, to be honest with you. Then I followed it up with grabbing my medley mushrooms, a bunch of those, and chopped it out really quickly, threw it into a pan with some onions, and then while it was cooking to cook down and get all that water content out of it, I grabbed squash leaves, which I've never actually used before, which I thought you couldn't actually use. I grabbed them and it's just sort of like nettle, it has needles on them, so you have to rip off the needles, I mean, not the needles, rip off the leaf part, and you have to cook it 
much longer than normal nettle because it has that fuzziness to it. You don't want that fuzziness in your throat. Just saying. No, 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 not good. So keep doing that until it's pretty much like not that fuzziness anymore, which is kind of interesting. Great flavor. It kind of has like a meaty like texture to it when you like cook it down. I think that's cool. Which then I plated it up, boom, 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 ba, and added these microgreens, which my friend Ross uh, grows, which is kind of cool, with amaranth. I've never seen amaranth microgreens before, so I was like, uh, yes, please. I'll totally do that. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Now let's make this dish fast paced as well. This is my salad, but there is one more dish, of course. This is a nectarine lavender dressing with kale, napa cabbage, and tomatoes, and some feta. So how this was made. First I grabbed freshly picked lavender and then grabbed nectarines, cut that into pieces, threw it into a pan, boiled it, pureed it, which I also added the lavender into the sauce to make it floral. Then I grabbed kale, napa cabbage, tomatoes, feta, boom ba. Ah, now for my last dish. This is what you've been waiting for. Forgive me when I say this, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but it sounds like how it sounds, okay? Golden pompano fish and grilled chicken. Two separate dishes, but I tried it out with the panko. With sauteed fennel and squash and ramp gramolata. Now, before I tell you the story of this, context actually matters when telling you about this, okay? About pine cones. Now, the thing about pine cones, you don't see them being sold at stores, but you do see pine nuts getting sold and also pine tips, which is usually in restaurants. You'll never see it in a normal store. Now the thing is, I questioned that. So back in the day, the point of a chef was to try ingredients, brand new ingredients. And these brand new ingredients were to see if they would get poisoned first and if they, the chef would die, then they wouldn't serve it to the royalty. That was the point of a chef. And the problem is, that has been lost, of course, because you don't want people dying, of course. But the thing is, the point of it was to allow curiosity for a chef to help the community and more people to try new ingredients and bring more flavor to you know, their lifestyle. But the thing is, that's been lost. Now you know the context of why I do things. All right, so first I grabbed the pine cones that were green and picked them. Now the thing is, online it says that they're toxic. Now I'm about to debunk that. Now one of the first things you need to do is this. When you're trying a brand new ingredient, and I wouldn't suggest doing this for raw ingredients, it's when it comes to like something cooked, you grab it and you put it into your forearm. And then if nothing happens and you don't react, then you put it into your lip. And once you've done that, and nothing happens, you taste it on your lips, you, you lick it. Nothing happens. If that's all good, then you digest it. Now the thing is, Online, it's already talked about you can't eat pine cones. They're obviously talking about being raw. So that's already outside the door. So clearly you have to cook it. Now the logic behind that is majority of ingredients are not really good for you raw. Take for example, mushrooms. There's only one mushroom that you can actually eat raw. Majority of mushrooms will actually make you sick. Take for example, morels. You have to cook them, you don't you're not gonna feel so great. And there's some mushrooms that you're supposed to cook completely with no water inside of it, otherwise you'll get sick. But we don't sell that to the public because a lot of people are pretty lazy. So first what I did was I grabbed the pine cone and I took off the needles. And I noticed that it actually looked like artichoke. After I was thinking about that, I grabbed some water and added some lemon juice to create lemon water, just in case. So since the pine cone was going downward, I gotta peel it and I just went downward peeling it because I didn't want to damage it. Because you know, it's never time, I've never used it. That's the thing. Once I did that, I treated it like a fruit because you know, it came from a tree. So I cut it in half and I noticed there were seeds. Now, common sense, you don't eat the seeds. So I took out the seeds by cutting the core out and wouldn't you know it, it started oxidizing exactly like artichoke as I predicted. Then I just dropped it in there and I let it soak in the lemon water. Another thing you need to find out is if something is actually toxic or if there's anything poison, the stuff will come out of it and surface to the top of the liquid. And I was like, oh wow, okay, that didn't actually happen. Sweet. At this point, I decided to boil the pine cone and until it was soft. Then I pureed it, and then at this point I wanted to try it to see how my body would react 
and digesting it because there are a couple things you need to look out for. Are you going to the toilet and, let's be honest, and the other part is, are you getting dehydrated really quickly? So these are some key signs that you can figure out that you're not really feeling good. And of course, if your liver is actually hurting, you're like, my stomach, ew, it's no. So nothing happened to my body. So we were in the clear. Now what I did was I grabbed my chicken and my pompano that I filleted and cut up into pieces, put it into a vacuum pack and I added in the sauce to it to, well, you'll notice the pompano, golden pompano fish is more green. I added some pea vine sauce in there cause I wanted to brighten up and try something different. You know, I'm always experimenting. I can't help myself. So then I just grilled it off and finished in the oven. And for the rest of the dish, I grabbed rams, or uh, ramps, as we call it rams in the industry. Followed up by just chopping that up with some freshly picked fennel outside. <laughs> I can't help myself, I just love foraging. Chopped that up, made a gramolata out of it. And in the meantime, I sauteed some squash and some fennel, and I plated it up. Boom, 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 ba. I will mention, I forgot that I added some lemon juice to the gramolata. The same. All right, guys, you know the drill. I'm Chef Nicholas Kinnear. Don't forget to click the like button if you like this video. And of course, if you want to follow us on our page, which we post every week, which I'm actually back, come on, you can swipe up there. There's a little button up there. It can take you if you're on mobile or if you're on desktop, click over there, which will take you to our page. And all you have to do is click the like button and boom, bah, you're part of our page. And if you want to see other stuff, we do post on informationcuisine.com. That's our page where we give other insights and I do give off a little more notes just in my, instead of my video because sometimes I can't all fit all this stuff in my video. Just saying. And of course, if you want to follow us on my goofy self, of course, you can follow my Instagram. And uh, I just want to say thanks guys for watching my videos. I really do appreciate this. I could not imagine a lot of people viewing my content like this. This is kind of just insane in my opinion. Like, oh my God, that's a lot of people. That's insane. Anyway, thanks guys. I'll see you next week. Peace.